Episode 2. You were all getting screwed. You and I didn't create a financial crisis or jam home mortgages that could never be paid back. We didn't merge all the banks, uh, say oops, when they collapsed. And take bailout dough to pay bonuses. No, no. The corporate criminals and their buddies in Congress did that. We could still be having a good run in this country. I don't know. But they, they decided that their share wasn't enough. They took it all. The only right thing to do is to hit them where they feel it. You know, banging on their, their net worth. And we can't cave. This is Rage. Rage. Story Plan Podcast presents This is Rage, a dramatic presentation based on the novel by Ken Goldstein. By now, you know how our Silicon Valley story begins. Shock jock Chemo Balthazar became former shock job Chemo Balthazar after delivering a stream of words the FCC insists you can't say on broadcast radio. Maybe he should have tried Sirius XM. But unless you're Howard Stern, the pay parallels fast food, and even they don't hire burned-out has Meanwhile, my bosses, who are actually pretty decent guys, met a coder they thought was going to save their algorithm and wound up kidnapped by his lunatic cousin. More on them in a few minutes. First, let's get back to Chemo Balthazar, who, I'm sure you'll recall, I have a history with. A dark, painful history. Balthazar took his latest flame out very badly, and for good reason. He'd spent every penny he ever made on high living and divorce proceedings, so being without a job meant that he was without a way to pay his rent. Also, he had alienated producer Lee Creighton, who had been the last person on the planet he could even remotely call a friend. If that wasn't enough crashing and burning, using obscenity on live broadcast had landed him in trouble with the government, with the possibility of enormous fines he'd never be able to pay it was going to be impossible for him to find another job in radio, no matter how small the market. Could he do anything else legally to make a buck? You know, I don't think so. I didn't enjoy learning that all of this had come down on Balthazar. As you already know, I was crushed when we split. And I wouldn't be honest if I didn't say I had the occasional uncharitable thought about him. Still... I never wanted him to be sleeping on park benches, which is where a groundskeeper found him a few days later. (sighs) A homeless guy with a laptop, only in San Francisco. Uh, I'm not homeless. I'm in hiding. Yeah, right, and you don't smell bad either. Hey, I'm a little down on my luck, all right? I thought that's what a park was for, rejuvenation. Wait a second, I know you. (gasps) Your face was on the side of a bus. You were on the radio. I used to listen to you on my lunch hour. Well, not me. I do drive time. You're that chemo bell phaser. Didn't you just... Oh, oh, yeah. Now I get the sleeping on a park bench thing. Wow, a famous radio has been on one of my benches. Now, aren't there some children you could yell at to keep off the grass or something? Yeah, I always heard you weren't a nice guy. I'll go back to my rounds. And, um, just so you know, the police sweep for vagrants at night. You laying low, huh? Yeah. Well, looks like you got a friend uh, showing up. Not a chance. (laughs) I don't have any friends. Hey there, wild man. Guess who found you? Oh, ex-producer Lee Creighton, vermin. This is your friend? Oof, show business is rough. Well, good luck to you two losers. I like my job, and I get a pension. One of the last... Won't find me sleeping on a bench. Ah, Do you look as bad as I do, Chemo? Murderer? What do you care? How'd you find me? I didn't kill your career, Chemo Sabi. You did. Anyway, there's a chip in your phone. I have a tracking app. That's how I always found you when you were late for work. What? Delete the app, you assassin. I'm officially off your radar. And I'm guessing you won't need it for your new boss. I don't have a new boss. Turns out I'm kind of unemployable. Too close of an association to you? Oh, that's great. Yeah, thanks for the extra helping of guilt. I haven't taken enough crap already. I'm just telling you like it is. You mind if I sit? Oh, the park's open to idiots. I can't stop you. Look, I found you for a reason, Chemo. We need to work again. Together. If you think you're toxic by yourself, what makes you think we're going to do better as a package deal? Times are different. Look, I have a crazy idea. 
We don't need a radio station. Not anymore. Oh, fine. Yeah. No, we'll get a soapbox. I'll stand on it all day. People can throw coins on the ground. No, I'm thinking of something with a little more technology. I hate technology. But technology does not hate you. We still have the website. You have fans out there. I've checked. And how do we get on the internet, living among the squirrels? Well, that part's easy. The museum over there sprays broadband all over this park. Look, I think we should try it. Try what? Internet radio, Kimosabi. This is Rage.com. The one thing they can't take from us. Here, I brought you a headset with a mic. It was on clearance at Best Buy. Give it a go. Give what a go? Talk into the computer. It's like its own broadcast tower. Uh, no, this, this is stupid. <laughs> you want to change the name of the show? I've always liked This Is Rage, but we can go with This Is Stupid, if you prefer. It actually might be more appropriate. Look, 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 it's simple. I've set it all up because that's what producers do. You just have to be the talent. You know, they really need to close these parks to idiots. All right, all right. If I try this and it fails, do you promise to go away forever? Emphasis on forever? I do, and I will. It won't fail. Go on. Put on the headset. I'll adjust the mic. Uh, uh, don't touch me. <laughs> Fine, you position the mic. You know how. Then just rant. You certainly know how to do that. Only this time, yeah, try to be a little nicer. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, punch me in here. Hey, gang. Welcome. This is Rage. Well, it was. But now, this is just pathetic. Are you doing this to humiliate me? No, go on. You're doing great. <laughs> go on. With what? How about an apology? Oh, you've got to be kidding. Well, that wasn't my kidding voice. Go on. It'll be good for your conscience. You've known me this long, and you're still under the impression that I have a conscience? I know you better than you know yourself. Do it. <clears throat> Gang. I'm off the air. Well, sort of. Uh, I'm looking at my website, so I guess I'm live. Listen, I gave some of you bad counsel. My words did have consequences. I think a few of you got hurt, like, like my final caller, Annabelle. And I'm sorry for that. And if I let you down, I carry that with me, believe me. I really, I really liked doing this show. And hell, I got paid to talk. And so now I, I can't help you at all. But let me ask this. If anyone can hear my words, can... Can you let me know you're there? Tell them to use the chat box where they used to message you when the phones were busy? Well, producer Lee Creighton says that you can text me using the chat box... Yeah, yeah, he's here, too. I told you this was pathetic. Well, I'm looking at the chat box, and at the moment, uh, it's empty. If anyone wants to say goodbye, just go to that box, type whatever you want, then we'll be done. Well... There you have it. Hey, we had a decent enough run. Um, you'll hear me when you hear me. Or maybe you won't. It looks like producer Lee Creighton's gonna learn the meaning of the word forever. Hey, look at the chat box. What? Someone's written in. Look, it says, Chemo, you didn't let me down. <laughs> what? Gang, you, you aren't gonna believe this, but, uh... This, this, this chat box thing is happening. Uh, uh, who, who is that? Check this out. I can switch it from text to speech. Damn, I love Silicon Valley. Chemo, it's middleman in Illinois. You told me a few years ago that it, if my coworkers didn't take me seriously, that was their problem, not mine. Uh, what's the rest of your story, middleman in Illinois? I'm a manager now. 
Wouldn't have happened without you. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. The, uh, congratulations. Thank you, middleman. Uh, anyone else out there? Balthazar, you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, true fan. Yeah, uh, uh, where are you texting from, true fan? Sleeping rack done. You warp drunk? That's my kind of guy. Hey, you're listening here. That's something. That's something. Uh, what, what are you doing on my dead webpage? You make me laugh, loser. Don't give up. We need you back. <laughs> this is mind-blowing. Right, I think I hate technology a little less. All right, uh, Producer Lee Creighton, how, how do you know there'd be listeners out there? Once a star, always a star. Uh, now you want me to become an internet radio star. Why not? You already have two listeners. Whoa. <laughs> What'd you say, old pal? Are you ready to tackle New Horizons? All right, maybe, maybe. All right, show me some more. I want to, uh, I want to see how all this works. Oh, yeah, let's see. I didn't hear Balthazar on ThisIsRage.com that day. I was kind of busy, as you can imagine. The workday tends to ramp up when your co-CEOs are kidnapped by a pair of rogue entrepreneurs. However, our CFO, Sanjay Basru, somehow found the time to check out the new internet version of This Is Rage, which I discovered when I joined him in the conference room. Clickbait can have strangely broad appeal. What are you listening to? Some guy on the internet, a friend forwarded me the link. This host is a crack up in a sad kind of way. Is this really what you should be doing in our current situation? Just feeling a few minutes before the staff meeting. This guy says he had millions of listeners on AM Talk Radio. Hates business. Seriously funny. Chemo something. Chemo Balthazar? Yeah, that's it. You listen to him? We were involved in some litigation some time ago. Oh, I'm sure you ate his lunch. He's not that smart. Seems to be up to a few hundred listeners, though. Perhaps he could be the podcast king. (laughs) He's smart. He just doesn't think like you and I. Turn it off. Steyer's coming down the hall. I apologize for being delayed. I have with me FBI Special Agent in Charge, Camille Husseini. Agent Husseini, uh, this is Sylvia Normandy, our general counsel, and Sanjay Basru, our CFO. Hello. It's nice to meet you both. I wish the circumstances were different. I'm an admirer of your company. Agent Husseini is the local go-to man at the Bureau when it comes to negotiation. Negotiation? Has the board approved that course of action? We have. The kidnappers are obviously amateurs. They're using the pseudonyms Ben and Jerry. Ben and Jerry? No, that's funny. They want $5 million deposited to an offshore account and use of your company's G5 to fly them to an undetermined destination. They actually believe they'll be able to use the money to fund their startup company. They're giving you 24 hours to pay up or the inevitable or else. Now, like I said, they're clueless. The FBI will have them pinned down in a reasonable amount of time. Am I correct, Agent Saini? Yes, yes. We'll find them. I'm confident of that. Although the face prints from the cameras in your home aren't giving us a match. Well, the important thing is that you bring them back safely. If it takes a little extra time to do this right, we'll find a way to stall them. He just said we had 24 hours to transfer funds or else. How do we stall? As I mentioned, negotiation is Agent Husseini's strong suit. He knows his way through a shoddy ultimatum. If Choi and Finkelman had bothered to make an entry in their daybook about who they were meeting, this all might be over. Indeed, they don't take good notes. They're visionaries that way. Don't worry, folks. We'll track them. In the digital era, everyone leaves a trail of breadcrumbs. By the end of the week, everything should be back to normal. Again, take the time to do it with the least risk. Now, if only we can keep our shareholders as calm as our executives. Public markets hate uncertainty. (laughs) Well, I'll leave that part to you. I need to get back to my desk if we're going to make this happen. I hope the special agent knows what he's doing. He seems like a bit of a desk jockey. The board supports him unanimously. So that's it? We're not paying? Did you really think it would be otherwise, Counselor? Five million dollars is nothing. They could have asked for ten times as much. Twenty times as much. Those numbskulls let us off easy. I should transfer it via PayPal. Sylvia, they want us to go into business with them. They want us to groom them for an IPO. Sounds like they were trained at Microsoft. It wouldn't even register as a blip on the PL. Like you said, they're amateurs. They'll disappear as soon as they get their money. You surprise me, Sylvia. This is a major crime. We're letting the FBI handle it. Despite the headlines, our stock price is only down 2% since market open, which is a miracle. We are handling this by the book and being rewarded for a steady hand. If it makes you feel any better on Agent Husseini's guidance, I told Ben and Jerry I'd think hard about their ask. That's going to buy us some more time. May I ask a question? What's on your mind, Sanjay? In this meeting, are we going to be discussing Atom Heart Entertainment? I've received three texts from Mr. Seidelmeyer's assistant since you walked through the door. Sanjay, this is clearly a time to backburner business. Our CEOs have a gun to their heads. Unfortunately, Counselor, business continues. 
Let Seidelmeyer know that I'm prepared to meet with him. I'll fly to L.A. at his earliest convenience. Have you lost your mind? Are you...